This is the Fujifilm X-Pro3, camera that was released 5 years ago. So which begs the question, should you still get this camera in 2024? Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, it's not going to be an in-depth review about the X-Pro3, but rather it's going to be my personal experience after using this camera for just over 3 months now. So in case for anyone who hasn't seen or heard about this camera before, this is the X-Pro3, which was released in 2019. So in comparison, it's going to be just a couple of months earlier than the popular X105. So that makes this camera an OG of a rangefinder style mirrorless camera in my opinion. I'm not going to go too much into the full specs, but these are some of its key features. So for you guys who don't know, I'm a Sony Alpha user like for the longest time now. So in a way, I feel like I'm kind of spoiled because of all the tech we get from Sony cameras these days. Therefore, it feels like cheating when it comes to making images with Sony cameras. So why the X-Pro3? So the reason why I bought this camera is because I wanted a different photography experience. Not because I have an epiphany or some life-altering experiences. And also because the X106 is out of stock everywhere. One of the reasons is for its rangefinder style of photographing things. The hybrid viewfinder means I can choose to use the optical viewfinder to compose my frame in real time and switch back to the electronic viewfinder if I need to. And because the viewfinder is located at the corner of the camera, so one eye I can continue to pay attention to what I'm trying to compose while paying attention to my surrounding. This is super useful for me as I can anticipate any potential subject that's entering my frame. And the next reason is the aesthetics of the camera. Look at this. You're not going to say more? So the silver top finish and then not to mention the retro look is just going to be And not many cameras offer the kind of intangible feeling other than Leica But of course ain't no way I'm going to drop $8,000 just for a camera body And of course perhaps the biggest persuasion is the Fuji film simulations So from Eterna, Velva to Classic Negative The preset of the presets if you will and the best part is I can always shoot my photos in RAW and then apply this film simulation in Adobe Lightroom in post depending on the kind of mode that I want to project onto viewers. So what I don't like about this camera, firstly it's the lack of the wheel dial right here. So it might be the Sony in me talking but personally for me I would prefer to adjust my ISO using the back dial over here. Also I never did like adjusting the aperture from the ring itself right here because the aperture might get adjusted accidentally while I'm out shooting. So normally how I prefer to operate my camera is to adjust the shutter speed right here from the front and the aperture down right at the back. But I haven't quite been able to figure out setting it that way. So for any X-Pro3 users watching this video, let me know how you're going to set it up in the comments below. So the next thing I didn't quite like is the flip screen right over here. So when Fujifilm released the X-Pro3 initially, it can't receive a lot of hate for this flip screen because you actually have to flip out the screen to view your photos or the menu. It's not exactly a deal breaker for me, but if you have to mount this camera on the tripod or using the Arca Swiss plate or a Peak Design standard plate like what I'm using, flipping out the screen to check your composition becomes very cumbersome because you can only flip out the screen halfway. Another thing is probably going to be my biggest complaint, it's the flip on and off switch right over here. So a lot of times when I took this camera out of my bag, I noticed that the camera was accidentally turned on because the on off switch is kind of protruding out as you can see over here. Of course, the easy fix is going to be removing your battery when you're moving from point A to B and when you're ready to shoot, just pop your battery back in. But sometimes it's going to be an issue because you might need to take out a camera to take a couple of shots off quickly. So who this camera is for? If the appeal of a film camera is something you appreciate without the price tag of purchasing films and developing it, then this camera probably might be for you. That's provided if you can still find this camera from reseller. So personally for me, it's a camera that I'll take out to shoot every now and then just because it's just so fun using it. Of course, when it comes to paid client works, it's going to be my Sony all day. Not that the X-Pro3 isn't a reliable camera, it's just that when it comes to shoots that I cannot afford to screw it up, I'm sticking with a camera system that I am familiar with. So perhaps the biggest question right now is why I keep this camera? Probably. And let's say if I'm able to exchange this for an X106, uh, probably a high chance. So that's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's going to help this channel in the long run. So until the next video, get out there and make the best of every opportunity you're given. Peace.